I know your story is, man, if, if I could have been a fly on the wall like you guys, you know, back then and seeing what who you guys were linking with, this whole lab cab thing, I, I wish they found those tapes, but that that's, could be some gold right there, man, of yeah, Eric, right? EMC. I, I wonder, I, you know who could, yeah, Romai probably got all that stuff. I know Romai and the far side, they've been doing these separate things where uh, yeah. Fat Lip, Trey, um, uh, Fat Lip, Trey, and Imani been on the road and uh, Romai separated himself for whatever reason, I guess they internal things. Um, but I remember, it was, I think it was Romai's crib. Um, and he started doing a lot of stuff separately with different acts and, and shit, it producing and whatnot. So I'm sure them lost files are somewhere, man. I'm sure that would be dope to find, right? Yeah, for real, dude. You know, but we've all recorded like Echo Sound. I don't know if you ever heard of Echo Sound, but of course. Echo Sound was in Glen Glendale. Yeah, Echo was like, man, notorious for just hip hop, bro. When we was in there, when we mixed our album, fucking Eric B was there <laughs> we were mixing them down the final we were mixing down the final um what was it, the outro so we were kind of like freestyling if you listen to the album on another level our, our, our only debut album um at the end the last song eric b was in the studio brock kim wasn't there but eric b was there but still at that time it was like that's motherfucking eric b you know what i'm saying like we were still fans of hip-hop even though we were in it and i think back then though Cats pride, we was a little more prideful, right? Because we was trying to mm. not compete, but we thought we was the next nigga. So we was like, you know, that's Eric B, but what up, y'all? This West Coast. And we gave his props for the show, but still a little nervous. Like, damn, that's motherfucking Eric B is on deck. So right, once we got comfortable with Laylaw and Cube, it took a while to get comfortable with that. Even though my pops was homeboys with, uh, my pops uh, was, was homeboys with, with, with Suave and, and, and different people. And Tone Loke and my dad were, were close. And that's actually how we got our deal was my pop. We did the demo and my pop gave it to Tone. And uh, Tone was like, yeah, it's cool. But uh, I'm saying what I do. This is the nigga you need to give it to right here. And Law was like smoking a blunt. was like, hey, let's go in the car and listen to it. And uh, back then we had the chip phones. Remember them? Niggas had the chip cell phones or whatever. We was at Magic Mountain that day, right? We had Six Flags and. It was like TLC performance or some shit. I always tell the story because it means so fucking much to me. But my pops like probably beat me, right? So I come him back and he's like, my nigga, you got to get over here right now. Just a play ball. You just got to deal. And he talked fast with priority and Cube and da -da -da -da, he's naming all these names. I'm like, Cube and what, what, what the hell? You talking too fast. We come now. And I'm like, we have six flags, man. We just got in. We were still about to do it tomorrow. And so... No bullshit. Um, him and Law had listened to the demo, and Law was looking for a group for Law House to partner up with Cube to put through priority because at that time, Cube had just did his solo thing and he was kind of just deep in there with priority, and they were just giving him the, the open door to do shit. So he, him and Law partnered up, and Law was looking for a group that was different than everything else he had. I think he had cocaine and, um, and you know, a bunch of spinoffs of Above the Law. And he was working with Michelle and different shit, but he just wanted a different style group. And uh, he was like, this is perfect. You know what I'm saying? These niggas from the hood, but they got a different kind of style. They hip hop, but on some player flow shit. Oh, perfect. We want to meet them. So like the next day, um, we all get together and we think we're about to go somewhere far. My nigga does. We went two blocks up the street. I live on 62nd. I lived on 62nd mm -hmm. and my folks are still over here. But we went to 59th. So, you know, yeah. like, you know how close that is. We went to 59th and the same street. Buckler, make a right. And boom, we here. We're like, wait, what? Niggas, is this close? It was D Mac's house. Mm -hmm. And D Mac, you know, D Mac produced Ta Da. Um, what else? D Mac? Oh, California oh. Love, with Law. Um, all kind of fucking songs. I could go on. I'm drawing a blank now, but hella shit for Tupac. Like, he would pull shit out of his uh, dad player sometimes out of his a dads and dad players or Pac and niggas having just talking. He need to let some of that shit go. I know D-Mac still got all that shit too. You know what I'm saying? But we, we go up there and, uh, they had the demo on deck and they were like, yo, we want to sign y'all. And, you know, we listened to the demo. It was like four songs on the demo. They were like, we want to just finish the album and let's rock like right away. And we was like looking at each other like, were and cube and they keep mentioning cube is gonna be a part of this and we're like okay shit church cube is my favorite artist oh, right yeah. now you know 
let's do it. Cube was super hot at that time. You know what I'm saying? And, and had just branched off from NWA and, um, you know, was on his conscious shit and, um, you know, was one of my pop's favorite artists besides Karis One. My pop's was big in Karis One and love Cube and shit. So I, my pop's is, you know, he was a young, uh, young father. Yeah, I mean, when he was a dub. So, mm. you know, at that time, shit, he was 30, shit, I was 15, 16, he was 35. You know what I'm saying? So he was young too. So he chilling with Law and them blazing and whatnot. And, um, and then Cube comes through like a week later. Um, to the, as we're recording and just kind of solidifies that this shit is real and we're about to really run this through priority and and we're all just sitting there smoking 19 blunts in a row we we, we high as giraffe pussy at this time because we young you know what I'm saying and he's smoking gas at the time he probably got you know how law did it law have a whole QP just laid out just rolling one after one and mm. hit one pass it to you roll another one and the whole time we talking he rolling up and firing another one it's probably like eight blunts going around and it's only seven cats in a room, you know? <laughs> and so we was just, it was surreal. You know what I'm saying? That whole experience going from doing this demo tape and really grinding it out. Sticks mom used to always say, rest in peace, Sticks. But Pat, Mama Pat would always say, when you niggas blow up, I want a new house. I want this because we would, we would record in the back of her house and she would have to go to work the next day. And she'd be like, you nigga, how much longer? One more take, you know, we're going to, he need to bust the verse one more time and we done or whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he got to put these last scratches on the hook or whatever. And finally, my grandfather was like, just come to my studio. And he was big in the jazz, right? So he was more like at the jazz studio, but he had a real to real setup to where we could take it from the small little ass bunko back, you know, back house little joint to a, a little step up to try to finish the demo. And so we did that. And, um, Finished the joint, gave it to Pops. Like I said, he gave it to Tone. Tone slid it to Law. And then Law and Q kind of, you know, put the whole play together. And we started recording, bro. Like, we took, we even used, uh, I think, What's That You Say was on the demo. And we used, uh, that might be the only song from the demo that ended up making an album. Mm. But every song that we did after that was, like, uh, going on the album. Because there was another group called Another Level. And it was an R&B group. That's right. And we were and we were trying to break out before them. We were like, "Oh shit, it's another group, damn!" And so they were like, "No, we're gonna get y'all single off first, so y'all, you know what I'm saying?" And so we 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 hit what's that you say out, and and so my my whole life changed at that point. You know what I'm saying? Like shit was on the radio. We was on the box. Remember the box? Of course, when they dog. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, box they shut the box like, down actually because uh, they had some payola concerns man they were they were well not concerns it was some legit shit but yeah a lot of companies were paying to have their song that's why you heard bone thugs and harmony over and over again you heard oh, pyru love oh, you heard over, over, over again you know you heard some uh -huh. songs e40 over and over yeah because oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. it was so cheap to pay for it a label just say shit here i'm gonna pay for all day play this yeah. shit all day long you know and so at that time it was a trip because i'd be sitting in the barber shop you know, and either off Slauson or in Inglewood or wherever my homies was cutting at, I would follow them around to their shops, my homie Bill or wherever he was cutting at, and that motherfucking video would come on the box back to back to back to back. They were like, damn, you niggas is cracking. And we couldn't even believe it. Yeah. Then you jump in the car and it's on power and the beat. And we was just like, yo. So we was, you know, hood celebrities for a little while. You know, they shot the video and whatnot. And, uh, and yeah, man, it was a dope, dope experience, man. 